world travels, and my philosophy on kindness. You already know my husband and my mother. At this point, we're practically family, so I thought I may introduce you to my father. My dad, Patrick Henry Doan, was born on October 22nd, 1954. He is the middle child of five boys, all named after Catholic saints. There's Timothy, Gerard, Matthew, Patrick, and Ralph. And while you may not know of a Catholic saint named Ralph, there was one in my family. <laughs> my grandfather, Ralph Sr., was heavily involved in his church and extremely devoted to his family. My grandmother still is extremely devoted to her church and family and still lives in the house they raised their five boys on, on the lake in Charlevoix, Michigan. Growing up, everyone in town knew the Dome boys to be pretty good kids. My dad managed pretty good grades. He was captain of the high school football team. And in the summer, when he wasn't goofing around on the beach with his friends, he was helping the police force by passing out tickets to people parked past their meter time. A couple years after graduating high school, he even married his high school sweetheart, my mom. That brings me to life lesson number one. That kind of stuff doesn't just happen in the movies. Eventually, my dad decided to join the Air Force. One day, while he was packing for boot camp, my mother's little five-year-old brother decided he wanted to give a going-away gift to my dad. So when my dad got to boot camp, and the drill sergeant ordered his new nervous troops to empty their bags out onto the bed, out of my dad's bag fell quite a substantial rock. As a way of showing the young petrified soldiers who was in charge, the drill sergeant made my dad polish and paint that rock every single day of boot camp, and then present it for inspection. My dad still has this rock. Life lesson number two. It's not the gift, it's the thought that matters. I think I've mentioned before in a previous speech that my dad is a pretty adventurous eater. Prior to the age of 10, I was too. Much to my mother's dismay, one of our favorite snacks together was fried chicken livers, fried chicken hearts, and fried chicken gizzards. One of our favorite dinners together was liver and onions, and we spent many football games laying on the floor together, eating pickled herrings and crackers, smoked sardines, and smoked oysters. And while I wouldn't manage to eat any of those foods today, I have great memories of those times as a kid with my dad. Life lesson number three. Tastes and people may change, but the memories stay. I've only ever seen my dad cry three times in my life. When he lifted my veil after he walked me down the aisle to my future husband, when my mom and he decided to divorce, and when he said I do to his present wife. I've seen my dad laugh and smile more times than I can count. He cracks up every time we watch planes, trains, and automobiles at Thanksgiving. He laughs every time he tells the story of his youngest brother, Gerard, rolling out of the family car back when they didn't have seat belts in the back of the car. He still gets a kick out of that pull my finger joke. And luckily he chuckles when his son-in-law tries to advise him on life, politics, and religion. <laughs> life lesson number four, make the smiles and laughter outweigh the tears in life. When my dad decided to ask his wife to marry him, it meant more than just being with the woman he loved. It meant a huge amount of changes from the life he'd had in the past. He followed his new wife to Lillington, North Carolina, a small town about an hour south of Raleigh. This is the town my stepmother grew up in, her family live in, and they've all gone to the same Southern Baptist church for as far back as they can remember. My dad has built a life there that revolves around her, their church, and our family. He's now a deacon at their little church. He has a 
job working for the state helping juvenile offenders. And he lives on three acres of land surrounded by cotton fields and sweet potato crops. And despite the occasional ribbing from his southern family for being a Yankee, he's well respected and loved in his Bible Belt home. Life lesson number five, keep what's important important. I think you could call my dad a pretty conservative guy. He's more often than not right-leaning in his political views and opinions on social issues. He's no longer a Catholic, but a heavily devoted Southern Baptist. He's a hunter, a runner, and a true family man. While we may not always agree on politics or religion, I know no matter what, he is still and always will be a man who has taught me a lot about not being perfect, but being good. Knowing and living what makes you happy in life. Not judging people on superficial things. And how to be a person who goes with the flow and enjoys the ride that life takes you on. Life lesson number six. Change and differences are inevitable. So accept them and enjoy the heck out of all the good stuff that